What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over how you can get all four divine helms of the champions of Breath of the Wild and their piloted divine beasts in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, by the way, without amiibo. <laughs> Now you definitely can get these Divine Helms from the four champion amiibos if you have those from the Breath of the Wild release. And when you get it, cool, you can upgrade it, do whatever you want. And then you could choose to get this one as a second one, sell it off for some easy cash, but the bonuses of all of them are pretty fantastic. Also, the fact that you don't actually have to have the amiibo to get it is pretty awesome as well. After you complete one portion of the quest of Regional Phenomenon, that person is then going to give you an adventure log for a side quest. I don't think I got the one from Tullin. <laughs> That's not actually required for you to go ahead and get this piece of armor, or sorry, these four pieces of armor, which I'm gonna be going over now, which are actually pretty great alternatives to actually forking over the money for different pieces of armor. Like the Va Metal one from the Rito region helps protect against cold, and the one from the Elden region helps protect against fireproof. The Varuda one from the Lanayru region is gonna give you swim speed up, so they're all very handy things that, you know, save you a few bucks. The very first one we're going to be making our way to is going to be the Vob Meadow Divine Helm because if you're following along, you definitely have Tullin because he's the best. And in order to get that, we are going to make our way to right here. I don't know. Future Austin's going to correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm just going to dive down from the Sky Islands. If you did the side quest in Breath of the Wild, you will fully understand why it's going to be here at the Byron Snow Shelf because this looks like an eagle or a bird and that was part of a big side quest that from Rito Village it looked like a bird so because of that there was a shrine that was hidden inside of it and the fact that they have Va Meadow's Divine Helm which is again based off of the same bird makes so much sense okay that's our destination how far off was I Oh, I was exactly on point. Okay, great. When you make your way over here, you're gonna see this enormous chunk of ice. And if you either make a campfire, have a fire sword equipped, or a fire shield equipped, like my like my ruby shield right here, then that's going to be melting this. And thankfully, it does melt faster than it did in the last game, although one for this size, it's gonna take a while. Great, we actually don't need to melt fully, we just need to get in here. And here is the North Byron Snow Shelf Cave. Inside here, you, oh, oh. Thanks, buddy. Inside of here, there's going to be some rocks on the floor. And then you're going to be dropping down into a big old pool of water, and there's going to be a gust in the middle. Now, from this gust, if you look around, you're going to be seeing many different pockets that you can then shoot bomb arrows at. Is there a pattern? I think there's a pattern. Now, the bomb walls that you shoot are actually directly related to the three different directions of the hot springs all throughout the Hebra region including this one over here that has the shrine, this one over here at the top left, and this one over here at the bottom-ish left-ish. How this hot spring ascends in height to come to this cave, I don't really know, but cool. That's our second water stream, and right here it looks like our third. Nope. Basically, if a keys comes out of it, it's not the right one. But after you're finding your third waterfall, this is directly related to the three different hot springs that are in the area. By the way, if you're trying to upgrade some armor, you may want to go ahead and get these keys drops. Having so many congregated ice keys in one place is pretty handy and not very common. Plus, all of these rooms have a bomb flower, so you get a one-to-one -one ROI for you. And if you look at the very top of the room, the booble frog is actually up here. So be sure to take care of him. Got to get all those booble gems, right? Nice. At the bottom, when that large structure moved away, that's actually going to be revealing a room with a chest inside of it. Let's head on over here and collect this chest. And that's the Va Meadow Divine Helm. Defensive 2, cold resist. Next is going to be on Death Mountain in the Elden region. Now, I was super suspicious of this before I spoke to anyone here. Soon as I unlocked this tower, I'm like, 
Why are there two giant lizards here? Valrudania was a giant lizard, so it probably has something to do with these two giant lizards. And then I found out that there was like a, like a monster cave over here, part of a quest, but right here is gonna be called the Lizard's Burrow. So if you look at the top lizard over here, he's going to be staring directly at it. Not this bridge, this bridge only has a Korok on there, but over here, that's where we wanna go. And there's a shrine nearby, nice. And upon making your way over here to the Lizard's Burrow, there is no puzzle or quest or anything. You just walk in and there's a chest. There's no enemies, there's nothing to fight you, it's just here. And while this place is completely barren of enemies, after or before you get your Divine Helm, in this first room, if you look at the wall, you're gonna see some rocks over there. Let's go ahead and bomb those. And that's gonna be where our Booble Gem is hiding. Isn't that right? Thank you. And that's the Valrudania Divine Helm with Flame Guard. For the Vanaboris Divine Helm, Right from Gerudo Town, there's going to be a whole bunch of statues that are standing out in the desert, and they're going to be pointing at one another all in a giant trail, and you could actually just look at the map on exactly where they're going to be pointing, or just take my advice that it's going to be somewhere over here. I know for a fact it's somewhere between this skeleton and this square, so I'm going to head to this square for reference. This is where I am. I'm going to be going to this square right here. That square that I was telling you about is going to be the last statue that's telling you to go to this skeleton right here for reference on the map. Here is the skeleton, not this pin, where I am, just south of this shrine if you've unlocked it. And here's going to be a hole in the floor. Make your way into this hole however you want to. And this is the West Gerudo Underground Ruins. Now there is a enormous amount of rock down here. And... These guys are going to be telling you exactly where to go. And if you want to conserve some durability of your weapons, you could just thank her very much for the Traveler's Claymore, attach a rock to it, and start going ham. I don't know if using attack up armor works on rocks, but I like to believe it does, so I'm just going to keep doing that. And if you break that, you're going to see that there's a chest inside. We need to reach that chest. Since we're not able to make our way through there, we're actually just going to turn right. We're going to destroy some of these rocks. I already destroyed these rocks to make sure I was going the right way. And if we look to the left, we're going to be seeing another statue over here. And she's going to be holding out her sword and letting you know which direction you need to go. So that this entire video isn't just me breaking rocks, I'm just going to show you a cleared path of how to get here. There's going to be a statue who's going to be facing out this way. Once you clear these rocks, you're going to be seeing these ruins. Climb over them. Keep going diagonal. For reference to your mini-map, you're going to be going southwest. And then eventually you're going to reach either this pillar or this wall. If you reach this wall, you need to go to the right. And as we go to the right, we're going to be seeing a nice clear path over here. From here, it's going to be a straight shot through this corridor all the way to our final destination, which is going to be this chest, which is going to house the Von Naboris Divine Helm with shock resistance. After clearing out significantly more of the room than I needed to, I realized for the Booble Frog, after you made your way over this arch, instead of making a right at this wall, you make a left at this wall, you break a lot of rocks, you come back here, and here's gonna be your Booble Frog. And some rare gems, but the Booble Gem, best gem. Now in order to get the Varuda Divine Helm, you're either going to need the Zora armor, or a rocket shield, or an auto build of something that can increase your altitude, or a froggy suit, or a slip resistance potion. Any of those things will do. From Zora's Domain, there's gonna be that shrine right there, but we're actually gonna be going to the cave under Zora's Domain. If you're not familiar, you're just gonna go to the foot of Zora's Domain behind all the pee pee water over here. And we're going to make our way through the waterfall. And here's going to be the cave. Inside here is a chasm, in case you weren't familiar, to help you get down to the depths for whatever business you may have down there. I'm gonna go ahead, pull out my flying machine, because I did not get the froggy armor yet, because I'm waiting to make a video on that. And back here is going to be a booble frog for us. Ooh, did I hit him? Did he hit me? I think I hit him. And while we are in here, Behind this waterfall is where we are going to be going. And right here is our chest. And that's the Varuda Divine Helm. 
By the way, here's a neat little thing. Whenever you have one of your avatars out, if you put on your divine helm, they are going to be wearing the sage version of the same divine helm, which I think is super neat. I think it's because the sages that pass on their powers to the current sages are actually Ruda, Naboris, Meadow, and Rudania. Like, those are those four individuals. Because they always said that the Divine Beasts were named after the early champions of Hyrule. So I'm starting to think that the actual sages that you see in some of the memories that you see after you help out one of the four races, those are those individuals. These are their battle helms. And then the Divine Beasts were made in the image of the helms that they wore. And then your Divine Helm is made after that as well which I think is super neat. Here's Yonobo wearing Rudania's helm. Here is Sidon wearing Ruda's divine helm. And here's Riju wearing Naboris's divine helm. Very cool stuff there. Neat little, neat little detail. Now, because the ancient armor does not exist in this game, you're not going to have any set bonuses because this was a variation of ancient armor. Varuda gives you swim speed up. Vanaboris is shock resistance. Varudania is flame guard. Va Meadow is cold resistance. So a nice quick one piece to throw on here. When it comes to upgrading these, it is not worth it at all, dog. You don't get a lot of defense resistance and you're going to need Zonite and their respective gems. So for level one, you need one Sapphire and five Zonite for the Va Meadow Helm. For the Va Rudania, you need a Ruby and five Zonite. For the Va Ruda, you need five Opal. And for the Va Naboris, one Topaz. For level two, you're going to need four Sapphire slash Ruby slash Topaz and even more Opal. And then level three, you start to get to six Sapphire, five large Zonite, five Dazzle Fruit. And that remains true that you can need six Rubies, six Topaz, Sapphires. And then it, it just it just gets worse and worse from there. Do not recommend it. Don't upgrade these. There's no reason to. And if you do, you're going to be spending 15 large Zonite per piece, 60 in total, in addition to a whole bunch of gems. I do have that many gems. I'm just not going to do this because I'm not going to recommend you do this. But if you're trying 100%, go for it. I'm going to hang on to these. Plus, I don't like how it sits before the Zonite armor, and I'm actually going to need that. Know what I mean? The good news is, now that you've obtained these, if you ever wanted to sell them off, you're more than welcome to at 600 rupees per piece, and then you can repurchase them with 400 pose per piece from the bargainer statues after you've unlocked your second one. Either you got some cool armor, or you got some extra dupes, or you got some rupees from this. Great. Well, guys, I hope you found this information helpful. Uh, uh, let me know down below how many of you who watched the video have all four champion amiibos and how many of you are grateful that these are going to be in the base game and how many of you are like oh yeah that's cool that's neat i'm i'm not going to do anything with these ever but as starting off armor not bad right right great thank you so much for being here Till next time austin john out